Hey guys, it's Dean the number 10 again. Welcome to my Autopilot Functions tutorial. Um, in this video I'm going to explain everything you can do with the Autopilot. And um, at the end I talk about the nav and approach hold. So if you're a little bit uh, confused about those functions after watching my ILS signing tutorial, uh, you can skip to the end and uh, you can learn more about those. Uh, again, I will be using a Boeing 737-800 for this video, but the procedure should be similar, if not exactly the same, for other aircraft. Okay, so the first thing we'll be looking at is the autopilot master switch, which is right here. Basically, it just turns the autopilot off or on. There it's off. There it's on. It's pretty simple, but um, it's not going to do anything unless you tell the autopilot what to do. Next to the autopilot master switch we have the altitude hold switch uh, if you turn this on the autopilot will take you up or down to the altitude that you put in here right now it's set to 5,000 feet here it's on here it's off so let's go up to 8,000 feet Now you'll notice over here my vertical speed is now 1800 feet per minute. This is your rate of descent or ascend and basically it's how fast you want to go up or down. So if I want to go up faster I'll increase this to say 2000 feet per minute. Over here we have the heading hold switch. Um, here it's off, here it's on. Right now we're locked on to a heading of 340. If I want to turn left to 320, we simply do this. Um, if you move to the edges of this selector, you'll see bank limit. And this is basically how uh, far you want the airplane to bank left or right. So I can reduce that to 25. 20 or bring it back up to 30. Here we have the flight director. What this does is it adds these pink bars to the primary flight display. They basically guide you to where you should go um, according to the settings that you have input in the autopilot panel. And even if you've disabled the autopilot, notice that the uh, pink bars still remain. So let's say you've selected 8,000 feet and a heading of 320. Even if the autopilot is off, the pink bars will still tell you where you need to go. So uh, for example, if I uh, increase my altitude to 9,000, notice the pink bar has shifted up. That's where I need to be. So I'll just go ahead, turn on the autopilot, and let it do its job for me. Here we have the speed hold switch. Note that to activate the speed hold you must have the auto throttle armed. It's basically like the autopilot master switch but for your speed. So right now I've selected 250 knots which I guess is like the speed limit for aircraft in the 10,000 feet. And uh, you can move this up or down. Uh, basically this switch just toggles between um, knots and Mach number. So right now we're a little bit less than uh, half the speed of sound. Alright, now we're going to get into the good stuff with the nav and approach hold switches. Let's say we want to go to Seattle, but we don't want to use the GPS or we don't have one. Let's open the map. We're going to find Seattle-Tacoma. And we're going to look for its VOR station. A VOR station is basically a radio station located at or near airports that guides you to that airport using radio frequencies. You can find VOR stations because they have these blue boxes. So let's click on it. VOR Seattle. Take a look at the frequency. 116.80. So we're going to close the map. We're going to open the radio stack. 
find where it says nav1 and you want to put 116.80 where it says standby but you want to switch it to the active so you press the button in the middle to switch it alright now I want you to imagine that you have a bird's eye view of the VOR station in Seattle imagine that there are 360 lines coming out of that VOR station in all directions what if you could follow one of those lines to or from the VOR station? Well, that's where the course comes into play. The course is one of the 360 lines that you choose to follow to or from the VOR station. Let me show you an example. Right now, we are north of the Seattle VOR. That means that we want to choose a course that points in a southern direction. To keep things simple, I'm just going to choose course 180. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm choosing the line that goes through the VOR station at a heading of 180 degrees. Now, don't confuse the 180th course with the 360th. They are essentially the same line. They go straight through the VOR station, straight north and straight south. The difference is that course 180 points south and course 360 points north. So since I'm north of the VOR station, if I choose course 180, my plane will follow that line that goes straight south through the VOR station. But if I choose course 360, since I'm already north of the VOR station, I'm going to go away from it. I'm going to follow a course of 360 degrees away from the VOR station. Now that we've tuned into the VOR station and have selected a course of 180 degrees, we want to turn on the nav hold. In this plane, it says VOR LOC, but if you hover over the button, it says nav hold. We want to press that and our plane isn't responding right now. I believe this is a glitch. Uh, to solve it, go to the nav GPS switch. Switch it back and forth. Make sure you switch it back to nav. You want to keep it on nav. And your plane will now turn to follow the 180th course. Now, let's say you want to go to Seattle and you do want to use a GPS. Go ahead and open it up. Uh, I like to turn the terrain on, just makes everything easier to see. You want to go to this button with the D and the arrow, which is Display Direct to Waypoint page. You want to click on it. Click on the inner set of arrows. Click the right one that should bring this up and you want to type in the airport identifier which is Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha there we go Seattle Tacoma International Seattle Washington you want to press enter that highlights the code press enter again should highlight activate if you press enter one more time that creates this pink line uh, which is a direct route to Seattle. Now in order to make the autopilot follow this line we need to s go to the switch where it says nav GPS and we need to switch it to GPS because we are no longer using radio frequencies. We are not going to VOR stations like in the previous example. So you want to switch it to GPS however like the previous example you want to turn on the nav hold. So it's similar. The only difference is that you have this nav GPS switch to GPS. If you notice now, the plane is turning towards that pink line we just created.